The problem with the hedonic route is that, so the pursuit of pure happiness, let's say, is that what makes you happy in the next minute might not be something that will make you happy in the next hour. Well, you know that. There's this comic, what's his name? They called him King of the One-Liners. He talked about drinking wine. He said, don't you know that's going to cause a hangover? And he said, yeah, at the end, but the beginning and middle are excellent. And so that's really the problem with hedonism, right, is that to pursue something that makes you happy in the immediate present risks sacrificing your, well, many things, but at least, let's say, your hedonism in the medium to long term. And of course, that is one of the major problems with drug use, and alcohol is a really good example of that, because whatever hedonic kick you might get from it that moment at night, you're going to pay for almost completely, or maybe even more so, because t the next day you're much more jittery and anxious, and that's a that's a direct consequence of withdrawing from the drug. So when you're in, when you have a hangover, you're in alcohol withdrawal. So that's how fast you you get, roughly speaking, addicted to it. And so if you take another drink when you're hungover, it'll cure it. But it's not a very useful cure because all you do is push the inevitable hangover one more step into the future. And so part of the problem with the hedonic answer is happy when exactly and over what period of time and also who's happy because maybe something makes you happy but makes your family miserable now you could say well I don't care but you do care if you have to live with your family because they're going to take it out on you so so the the impulsive hedonism which is also fostered say by a positive emotion it, it tends to put people into a state of the pursuit of short-term hedonism it's not a good long-term or medium to long-term solution I actually think that's why people evolved conscientiousness, right? Because conscientiousness is not happy. Conscientious people aren't conscientious because it makes them happy. We're starting to think that they're conscientious because they actually feel terrible if they're just sitting around doing nothing. And so it's a way of staving off stress, the stress that's related to enforced leisure, something like that. You know, you, if you know industrious people, some of, you'll have, some of you are industrious, some of you will have industrious parents, they just can't sit around and do nothing, they have to be working. They don't feel good unless they're working. So, one thing about conscientiousness is that it, it involves continual sacrifice, right? You're doing difficult things in the present, hypothetically, to make the future better. But that's not driven by hedonism, by any stretch of the imagination. And conscientiousness is actually a pretty good predictor of long-term life success in stable societies. Because there's also no point in being conscientious and saving things up and storing things if a bunch of thugs are going to just come in randomly and, and take it all away. So conscientiousness actually only works intelligently in societies that have some medium to long term stability. You know, because you can get wiped out by hyperinflation too, because hyperinflation kills off the conscientious people. The people who accrue debts are thrilled when hyperinflation kicks in because it wipes out their debts. But of course those debts are the things they owe to people who were conscientious enough to save.